Hello everyone and welcome to the show. My name is Apostala Eddin and if you're not familiar with my channel, I make YouTube videos and I host live streams where I talk about my journey out of faith. And I try to use my channel to represent ex-Muslims and platform all sorts of people to talk about their beliefs or lack thereof. But unfortunately, uh, many religious people do not take kindly to criticism of their religion. And for Muslims specifically, it can be especially shocking to witness people critique, uh, satirize, or dismiss their religion altogether, along with its holy figures. And some people react to that unfavorably, uh, sometimes with violence, because that's what they're taught and because that's what they themselves have faced in, in their lives. Um, there are many reasons as to why. So I thought, uh, what a better way to start 2024 than by telling you the story of how three separate attempts to sabotage the ex-Muslim movement uh, have impacted my life very greatly and have led me to where I am today. So I realized that in the title I said online terrorism, and that is not really a, um, an exaggeration. Because I, I looked up the definition of terrorism just to make sure that I'm not exaggerating here. And one definition says it is the unlawful use of violence or threats to intimidate or coerce a civilian population or government with the goal of furthering political, social, or ideological objectives. And I think what I will talk about today qualifies as um, use of violence or threats to intimidate people with a certain objective in mind. So... Let's talk about how it all began. Um, I'll be, some of you might have heard some of these stories already or, or some portions of them, but I'll start from the very beginning. Uh, a few years ago, I had just realized what it means to be ex-Muslim. I have had doubts for a long time in my life and I didn't know how to deal with them. And eventually I realized that other people like myself do exist. And it was very reassuring to know that I'm not alone in the world. And at the time I came across people who talk about leaving Islam on YouTube and on other text-based forums. And there was a text-based forum where I participated and viewed a lot of other people's submissions. And one day uh, it started where there was an influx of hateful posts with very graphic images uh, targeted at a specific YouTuber. You might know who they are, but I'm not going to mention their name uh, for their privacy. And they would be either edited photos of that person or just mentioning their name and there would be a lot of violent imagery involved and it was either meant to threaten that person or to lower the morale of anyone who's using that forum uh, or maybe to get the, the the whole forum shut down because that is a strategy that I have experienced myself where those terrorists, let's call them that, are trying to scare people with images of what happens to those who criticize their religion or those who their religion deems to be unworthy. But also, they might be trying to get the platform shut down so that they can, on one hand, upload something very offensive, on the other hand, report it. And then, hopefully, um, from their point of view, hopefully that the platform would then remove the person uh, or remove the entire, whatever it may be, uh, entire channel, entire forum, on grounds of something graphic being posted there. So that's such a strategy that they take. So anyway, that happened somewhat frequently at the time on that forum. And I was just a, a regular user at the time. And one of those instances, it was a post that was not taken down for about half a day or some number of hours. And it was very, very distressing to be able to for everyone who uses that forum to see that graphic image and see that it's not going anywhere. And someone here says, uh, MDMDA says it's digital jihad to them. I think to some extent it might be viewed that way because they do do it for holy reasons. They think that they're helping the religion that way. Anyhow, so someone posted a very disturbing image and it wasn't taken down for a while because the moderators of that forum were not around. Um, and I don't blame them. It's, uh, it's an unpaid position and they already put in a lot of work all the time. But I, it pushed me to do something. I was already an active member of that community. So I decided to reach out to the moderators and offer my help and ask them, if you need anyone to moderate, just make sure to remove such posts because there's been an influx of them recently. I would volunteer to do so. 
that was way before I became Aladdin or that thought even crossed my mind. And they did. So that was the first instance of online terrorism um, propelling me forward on this journey that I didn't know I was going to be going on. So the first step was I became a more active user in that mem in that um, uh, in, in that space, and I became a moderator on that space. And then the second instance followed not too long after that, um, which seems almost almost planned in 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 hindsight. So it was also in that same text-based forum where someone was trying to post the public information of a beloved ex-Muslim YouTuber, friendly ex-Muslim. And I remember at the time noticing the post, taking it down, uh, saving the information and reaching out to uh, the YouTuber and asking him, is this your information? Or if this is your information, please be careful because someone tried to post it and I have removed it, but just giving you a heads up. And thankfully it was not his information. And then I asked him if he would uh, like to have me on his channel as a guest because at the time he was doing these live streams where he was interviewing uh, a guest a week or some, uh, it's some frequency like that to talk about their experience with the religion and leaving the religion. And I'm very thankful to him for that because I felt inspired by watching these live streams to share my own story. And I asked him if I can show up and he graciously uh, agreed. And then once I showed up on his channel, um, I chose a name semi-randomly. Uh, at first I was thinking of using a pseudonym from, um, from, from the Aladdin movie for some reason. I was thinking of a movie that has some Arab undertones to it, but Aladdin isn't exactly Arab. It's not clear whether it's Arab or Persian or something else. But I thought something that would be easy for English speakers to pronounce or identify with to some degree. Um, and something Snowman says, AA Origins. Yeah, this is my origin story, if, if you want to know. This is my origin story as a YouTuber, and I'm not, I'm not even kidding. So he invited me on to his channel, and we talked for over an hour. I think the live stream is still uh, up and... I have it linked in my playlist called uh, Appearances on Other Channels. It might be the first item uh, in that playlist. So we spoke for over an hour and it was a very enjoyable conversation. And there were a lot of commenters in the live chat, just like people in the live chat right now, saying that um, I should start my own channel or I should appear on his channel more often. And he was very encouraging in that way as well. And he asked me if I would like to... Uh, advertise any social media accounts that I have, and I didn't have any at the time. And right after that conversation, I remember that very same night, I went on TikTok like like he recommended that I do because it was a an emerging platform at the time. And I created a TikTok page. And I think I posted a video to it not too long after that, talking about the story of um, Prophet Ibrahim and his son that he was supposed to kill and how God basically pranked him was, was the joke that I was uh, approaching this, this topic from, uh, from that angle. That God pranked him by saying, you don't have to kill your son anymore. I believe you, that you love me. Anyway, it's, it's a very messed up story, but as a Muslim, I didn't notice how messed up it was. And I bet a lot of Muslims don't notice how messed up it is. So that's why I wanted to have a platform and, and at least tell people that there are other ways to view that story. Anywho, and not too long after that, I created a YouTube channel so I can post longer videos where I actually give some thoughts instead of um, making a, a, a trendy video with a trendy audio or something. Not that there's that's not useful or, or helpful in, in some ways, but I felt like I wanted to expand on my thoughts a bit longer. As you can tell, I like to talk sometimes. And I felt that TikTok wasn't enough for me to give my thoughts and expand on my thoughts. The live stream feature was very nice though, and I, I do miss that. So actually let's make it four instances of online terrorism that propelled me forward. So we've got the first two covered. First it was 
uh, gory pictures on that text-based platform. And then it was attempting to dox a ex-Muslim YouTuber. That was the second one. Uh, the third one was, I was active both on TikTok and YouTube, but more on TikTok. And I kept getting my accounts taken down all the time. I kid you not, there were WhatsApp groups and other groups on other platforms dedicated to finding people like myself and then mass reporting them. There would be dozens or hundreds of people who all go to the same account, to the same video and file the same report. And somehow that seems to fool TikTok or YouTube or Instagram or whatever other platform that is. So they had me in their crosshairs and I was, I was their favorite. All the time I was getting my videos reported for all sorts of things from hate speech to nudity. And I kid you not, I have never been nude on camera, at least not on TikTok. And I would still somehow get my videos taken down for nudity. And the funny thing is I would appeal those videos in a very tedious and, uh, and, and very painful process only for TikTok to eventually sometimes say, you know what, you're right, that video does not have any nudity in it. We'll put it back up, but you're still suspended from posting for a week and a half or for two weeks or however long it was. And it would still count as a strike. It wasn't a very formal way of, of knowing um, how many strikes the channel has or, or how close before they, they permanently deactivate my, uh, my TikTok account. But every single one of those campaigns brought me closer and closer to being banned. And that happened multiple times. And I've created multiple TikTok accounts to try to regain some of my following and try to go on live streams again. Because by the end of it, I didn't really care for making TikToks as much as I cared about the live stream feature, which I in some ways prefer to YouTube to this very day. It's, it's a different sort of live stream where I can get random people who have a thousand followers or more, which is a lot of people apparently on TikTok, and we can talk about whatever they want to talk about, about their faith. It's a lot easier than doing it on YouTube. Nevertheless, this campaign of online terrorism and intimidation and, and censorship, it worked in getting me off of TikTok because eventually I realized it's not worth the effort. It takes a long, long time to rebuild that following every time and I have to keep coming up with fake emails and eventually I had to find second and third phone numbers to use for verification. It was just not worth the headache. And the constant exposure to the hate was exhausting. There was, um, I mean, I've emphasized this before, but I feel like I, I need to remind people every now and then opposition from people who disagree with you is expected and you should have a thick skin and you should be able to deal with it even if they're in the wrong it's just part of the game but opposition to you talking about islam negatively is immense it is like nothing ever and it wasn't that i took these comments personally it's that it um it made me lose hope in humanity and lose hope in muslims and I started to view them with more and more animosity because when every day you get hundreds of people from all sorts of backgrounds, like this is not just Muslims who speak one language or from one region. This was from all over the world, all sorts of ages, including very young ones. Um, you'd see 20 year olds who are just ready to tell you all the ways that you should be tortured in. And it started to affect me and how I view them. And I didn't want that anymore. So because of that, I focused more on YouTube, which in my opinion is a lot more productive in many ways. There is room for short, uh, uh, short form content on YouTube as well and on Instagram, but I find my forte to be in talking a little bit longer. So I thank them to this very day because if it wasn't for these campaigns, I could have been a very different kind of uh, I could have had a very different kind of online presence. I mean, I might still have similar goals. I might still um, be a, a vocal ex-Muslim, but I think all that negativity on TikTok, whether or not I would have been mass reported, it would have overpowered me and it would have changed the tone of how I um, talk about things. And it's hard to have love for people when all you face is hate every day. So I thank them because 
they gave me the room that I needed to get off of TikTok and the room that I needed to think more clearly and have more constructive conversations. So that was the third time that attempts to censor the ex-Muslim movement and um, basically to, to intimidate also. Like I, I got a lot of weird messages and, and, and videos of me at the time, um, but I, I won't get into that at the moment. That was the third time and it helped me because I became more active on YouTube. And if I didn't become more active on YouTube, then I would have never quit my job and made this my main, um, my main focus. So I thank them for that. Now, the fourth and final example that I can think of, uh, for over a year now, I have been live streaming on YouTube and I take callers. Today, we're not taking any callers. I forgot to mention that, but I... Um, I take callers and often I am specifically asking for Muslims to call. Not because I want to fight with them, not because I want to humiliate them, not because I, I, um, I enjoy making them look bad or anything of the sort. I enjoyed listening to the average Muslim explain what they believe and why. And I think that there's a lot of value in that because on one hand, it helps humanize Muslims. People seem to forget that if you criticize what's in the book all the time, or if you criticize the most extreme examples all the time, or even how Muslims act in large groups, then you forget about what the individual thinks and feels, and you don't leave room for the individual to tell you that they disagree with how the mainstream acts, um, or with how a certain movement or another acts. And I didn't want people to have a bad idea about Muslims just based on what I critique in the religion. So it was, it has been nice to be able to talk to Muslims on a personal way, in a, on a personal level, without the pressure of a debate, without a pressure of, um, of conversion or deconversion or anything of the sort. And yeah, thank you for the reminder, Fumi, uh, in paradise. Everybody, please hit the like on this video or live stream if you are enjoying it so far because it really, really helps. Anyway, going back to the story. So I focused more on live streams on YouTube. And the way that I used to do it was using a certain platform that I will, I will not name at the moment, but I would just post the link. And if you would like to join, you click on that link and you would be queued up in a, um, like a sort of back room. So I can see a bunch of people queued up. I can see their video feed and I can see the uh, their name but they can't see each other so in that waiting room nobody can see each other they can only have a shared text chat and I can see everyone and for the most part it was going okay I was handling the live streams simultaneously doing multiple things at the same time I was keeping an eye on the live chat as I still am right now but um, I didn't have as many moderators at the time shout out to the moderators by the way I really appreciate your help and then I would also, while listening to the caller, I'd be typing in the, in the chat room, you know, making sure that the queue is ready, telling people what order they're in, uh, asking them to write about their story so I get an idea of who they are and what they want to talk about while also listening to the caller. And it was a lot of work, but it was manageable to some extent. It was exhausting, but it was manageable. Maybe it was burning me out and I didn't realize it at the time. But sooner than later, I started, well, after quite a while, I started getting the kind of trollish caller who would, um, who might either join and, and wreak havoc in the private chat or join the live stream and then start shouting things and then start shouting either, you know, Allahu Akbar or, or start berating me or maybe in more subtle ways start, um, trying to get inside my head or trying to get the live stream derailed somehow. And that happened and I would deal with it, you know, one case at a time. And then suddenly I started getting an influx of targeted attacks where they would have bots that would join these conversations, um, sorry, these live streams. They would take up all the space in the queues so that no one else can join. They would spam messages in the private chat, things about death and threats and things that I cannot mention on this live stream, but very, very disturbing things. 
And then eventually they started showing on their camera feeds very graphic scenery of all sorts of things that I cannot name right now. But um, to tell you the truth, it was disturbing. I've seen things in the in in the back room of of my live streams that I would have never seen in a lifetime. And there was no way through that platform to stop that from happening. I could b block a person or ban them and then two more would pop up because they're using some sort of script to to do that. And then some of them would try to outsmart me by pretending to be normal and then once they get on the live stream they would show said graphic imagery and and worse things on stream so that it would disturb everyone there, it would scare everyone there. Um, to give you an example of what was on there, like I said, there are some things I can't mention in detail, but let's say it's the same kind of stuff that a certain terrorist organization would show. There was that. There was um, pornographic stuff with my face on it, uh, with thankfully with a mask, so it hurt a bit less. Um, but even then, it wasn't it wasn't actually that bad. I mean, they were pretty generous in their depiction of me, if you if you get what I mean, uh, and. Um, there was all sorts of things that, that sometimes they would try to outsmart us by, you know, putting on a fake camera feed and then switching it out to something else. And they had succeeded multiple times to the point that it was frustrating. I couldn't get in a live stream without these attacks. Nothing I did worked. Uh, then I tried, I tried setting up a different space where they can be verified by talking to uh, some of the moderators and first making sure that it's safe to bring them into um, into the live stream and then we give them the link but somehow they still got through and i thought that that was going to destroy this format that i could no longer take calls at all uh, because of this targeted attack this this online terrorism again I don't say this because I, I think they're faultless, but the people doing this, they genuinely believe that they're doing it for good reasons. They see me as a force of evil that is trying to lure people out of off the straight path and take them to hell. So in their worldview, everything they did was more than justified. It was putting fear in the hearts of people who deserve to be terrified for their position. And... Um, and I apologize, by the way, for anyone who had seen some of these disturbing images if they were watching live at the time. I, I was embarrassed. I was ashamed that I, even though it wasn't me who was putting these images on, that because of my complacency or my trust in the callers somehow, um, that I have exposed the viewers to that. And I was extremely discouraged. I ranted about it to people. I've probably made a post or two about it. And um, I got some emails from supporters who said that they can help with the setup. Uh, set up in a way that would uh, filter through the callers better and make sure that their cameras can't be turned on, unlike the platform I was using. And I thought it was too complicated. I mean, I have some... Uh, background in tinkering with tech and 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 trying to understand how things work, but at that point I was I was and I continue to be sort of burnt out by channel work, and I couldn't fathom how I could put the time and effort and possibly money into such a setup to make sure that this doesn't happen again. But I got, like I said, I got people volunteering to help set that up for me. Um, there were some people who sent some money to help with the physical setup of, as well, if I needed any equipment, and I'm so grateful for that. And the volunteers um, at the time, they suggested some solutions that involved using a Discord server for the filtering and verification and things of that sort, and even for hosting the call that then I would use on the live stream. And at the time, the, the idea was floating around for a while that we should have a Discord ser server for the channel. And I, I remember saying, that seems like a lot of work and I, I would not be able to make sure that it's a safe space and I have to make sure that it is a safe space because I don't want anyone to be harmed in that space under my supervision, so to speak, or um, in a space that I created. So I was very, very nervous about the idea. 
But because of those attacks on my channel, because of my frustration and inability to, to do it by myself, because of the people who volunteered to help, um, as we were setting up a server for, uh, for, for the live stream reasons, I thought creating a server doesn't look to be that hard. I'll create another one for the community as well. And that was several months ago, maybe three plus months ago now. And we have over 120 verified members so far, which might not seem like a lot of people, but I have spoken to every single one of those people before letting them into our space. Um, all of them are supporters of the channel. And if you'd like to be one of them, by the way, just become a YouTube member or patron and link your Discord to the platform. And then we'll have a chat and then we'll see if you can join the server. But the point is, it's not just simply about having a Discord server. That Discord server means so much to me because up until that point, that was the peak um, frustration was when I was getting my channel sabotaged and attacked by these online jihadis who would literally show me jihadi videos. But because of the community coming together to help me out and because of having this space where I can mingle with them, where I can see that they're actually real people. I mean, I've spoken to people on my live streams. I hear their voices, but it's not the same as actually mingling with them, as seeing the same person on and on again, as knowing their name, as um, hearing what they're like when they're talking about topics that have nothing to do with Islam. And it, it, it felt like I was alone for as long as I was doing this channel. Um, even though a lot of people offered to help, even though a lot of people messaged me, even though I know people who do similar things and, and were friends, I still felt very, very alone. But because of that, because of these online terrorists, I had to change my setup. And because of the people who stepped up, stepped up to help me change my setup, uh, not only do I have a lot of members in that Discord server who are using it in ways I did not imagine uh, before, but I also have a lot of people who are willing to help who are now all in the same place, who tell me, you know, what their area of expertise is and how they can help. And I've used a lot of their help so far in ways that I've announced and ways that I haven't. Um, and I'm very, very extremely grateful to them for that. And in a way, I'm also grateful to um, all these terrorists I've crossed paths with uh, along the years. Let me re-emphasize, when I say that I understand why these people do the things that they do, I'm not excusing them. But it, it becomes difficult to hate once you understand why people behave the, day, the way that they do. And I feel pity for them and empathy instead of hate. And I really hope that somehow they see that every time that they try to take us down with some hateful method or another, it doesn't work in their favor. It just makes us stronger. I don't know where I will be a year from now. I don't know if I would be exactly where I am right now had it not been for the community. But I know that it's going to play a big part in this movement and in this channel specifically. Uh, because this is no longer just me trying to fight the rest of the world or trying to take this all on by myself. This is a community of people. So going forward, when you see videos or live streams, don't just think Aladdin is such a so-and-so, he did this. No, it's us. We did this. Uh, and I'm so thankful to... They're, they're in the chat right now, so make sure to thank them as well. To, to the people who have helped me get to this point. I don't know if there's anything else that I wanted to say about that. These are four instances of how online terrorism has propelled me to where I am today. And um, I always like to say the butterfly effect is is incredible. If any one of those things had happened differently, I don't know if I would be where I am today. Um, and thank you, ex-Muslim testimonies, I just noticed, for the super chat. Thanks for your effort to normalize apostasy. That That is one of the goals. So I think that's all I wanted to share for today. I'll make it a short live stream with a short uh, story time. I mean, 29 minutes is, is short for my, uh, for my standards. Um, I might not be live, I'm not live streaming next week, 
But the week after, I might have a very special guest. So hint, hint, it's a female ex-Muslim YouTuber. So if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like us to talk about a specific topic, or if you have any ideas about how you would like the chat to go, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And again, I'd like to remind you, um, I'm able to do what I do today because of the community that's around me. And not just ever since creating that Discord server, but from way before then. I've always received help and messages and encouragement. Um, and speaking of which, I would not be able to do it without, without all those people. So I want to thank all my supporters over here um, from Patreon, YouTube, and just one-time donations as well. Everybody has been very helpful. I couldn't have done this without you. And as always, think critically and 